Now, today marks the 55th anniversary of the death of the great Duncan Edwards. He made his name as a fearless wing half for Manchester United and England, but his life was cut tragically short when he died from the injury sustained in the Munich air disaster. Uh, he's the subject of a book, The Greatest, which has been written by James Layton. And James uh, joins us in the studio. Good to see you. Thank you for uh, me. Many people talk about the Busby Babes all of the time and those amazing days and that wonderful uh, team. But for those of the current generation who weren't familiar with what he was like as a, as a player and what a prospect he was, just try and put it into some sort of context. I think Bobby Charlton, I should say Sir Bobby Charlton, said it the best when he said uh, that Duncan Edwards was the greatest player that he ever played. And he said, bear in mind that he played with George Best and Dennis Law and Bobby Moore, and he also played against Pelé. So uh, when someone like Sir Bobby Charlton says that about a play, you, know, you, you sit up and take notice. And Duncan Edwards himself, he was uh, predominantly a right-footed player, but he spent the most, most of his career playing left midfield, so he's both-footed. He could play centre-back, full-back, on the wings, centre midfield, up front, and even played in goal during the Charity Shield for a stint and kept a clean, clean sheet when he was in goal. So he was a quite incredible player and considered world-class in every position. I was going to say, is there anyone nowadays that you could compare him to but there's there's no one around nowadays that could do all, <laughs> all the things that you just listed but i mean in his main area versatile midfielder who could he be compared to nowadays it's interesting because lately i've been looking at gareth bale and you see the, the builder gareth bale similar to duncan edwards over six foot tall and you know, very well built and uh, very quick as well and, and duncan edwards was of a similar mold to that and from the uh, accounts that you read, match reports and on, on YouTube, you can see Duncan Edwards was very big, very strong and powerful and could really carry the ball and he had a great left foot as well. We know about him as a player, but what about him and what he achieved? You mentioned him that he's 21 years old, we forget this, uh, when he died. Just what had he achieved by the time he passed? It's quite incredible really. You think he only really played four seasons of professional football and during that time, uh, before he became professional, he won three FA Youth Cups in a row. He was captain of the United youth team that won uh, a European competition in Zurich and he scored a hat-trick in the final. He then went on to win the league twice as a member of the Busby Babes. They reached the FA Cup final, which unfortunately they lost to Aston Villa. And he also, during that time, was one of the youngest players ever to play in a football league. And he was also, up until Michael Owen, the youngest ever post-war international for England. So to do all that in the space of four years before you're 21, it takes some doing. Just before I ask you about what uh, Terry Venables had said, I'm sure you're familiar with you know, his comparisons with, with, with Bobby Moore. Um, just tell us about the, the, the truth as far as when Duncan Edwards was, was originally signed by Manchester United. I've read conflicting reports that it was done late at night and, uh, and Matt Busby, so Matt Busby, actually went to his house himself to ensure that he was signed ahead of Wolves. Yes, um, there have been conflicting reports about that. So many reports say that Matt Busby uh, was actually there, but... Um, from my research, I don't believe he was. I believe it was actually uh, Jimmy Murphy. And um, Jimmy Murphy's car broke down on the, way, on the routes to Dudley um, during the days. This is before the motorways and everything, so it would have been a nightmare getting from Manchester to Dudley. Uh, he had to hi went back to Manchester to hire a car and then drove straight through the night to get there because they were aware that the teams in the Midlands, you know, Wolves, who were one of the big teams in the 1950s, were, were Iron Duncan up and really wanted to sign him. So... Jimmy Murphy didn't take any chances. He went, he went there in the middle of the night and, and dragged him out of bed and he signed there and then. <laughs> Made sure he, he got his man. Um, as far as what Terry Venables once said, he said that if Duncan Edwards had been alive, it would have been him that would have lifted uh, the World Cup in, in 1966 ahead of uh, Bobby Moore, uh, potentially, who would have probably been in the same side, being captain potentially by Duncan Edwards. I mean, it's all ifs and buts, but it is also the, the 20th anniversary of Moore's death uh, this weekend on the 24th, isn't it? Um, how do those two players compare? Are they, are they comparable? Wow, well, Bobby Moore is regarded as perhaps the best English defender of all time, probably the British, best British defender, maybe even the best in the world. But uh, Duncan Edwards was held in a, a similar vein to that, that. Many people thought that his best position would have been centre-half and he would have been um, perhaps one of the best defenders in the world. But then... There's also the fact that Duncan Edwards was also regarded as one of the best midfielders and the best forwards in the world. So I think, he, he, from what I've read and spoken to people, he might have been held in similar regard to Bobby Moore as a defender, but then equally he could play in midfield and up front as well. When you're looking and researching a particular player, how hard is it to, to get the facts and to make sure that you're putting across kind of a very even, sort of balanced argument for the greatest player? I interviewed Sir Alex just a couple of weeks ago, actually, and I'd said to him, 
Alex, if you could bring someone from the past, from any team around the world, and put it into Manchester United and replace him with one of your players now, who would it be? And within a second, he said Duncan Edwards. He said, however, I got my information from Bobby Charlton and I trust him. So it's that kind of generation that speaks so highly of him. How have you managed to get the information? Well, obviously, you hear people like Sir Bobby Charlton rave about Duncan Edwards. Um, and before I started writing the book, you you've almost tend to think, has is Sir Bobby's judgment been tainted by sentimentality? Mm -hmm. So you, I went back to look at the match reports that were written when Duncan Edwards played to see what people said there and then. So there was no um, danger of people uh, going over the top of him due to what happened in, in Munich. And the match reports that were written about Duncan after he played were just phenomenal. I mean, th the journalists used words like Colossus, Trojan, um, Giants. He was just remarkable. And when you read these match reports, you know, time and time again you read Manchester United were defending a lead, they sent Duncan Edwards back to play in defence, or they needed a goal, they sent him uh, up front and invariably he would score. He was, he was just a, you know, a one-man team and it's, it's such a, a shame that there's so little footage available of him on, on places like YouTube you now. Uh, just a, a final point, if you could sum up Duncan Edwards with, with, a, with an explanatory tale uh, from the book, what would best uh, describe him, I don't know, as a, as a player on the pitch or, or away from the pitch? Yeah, one of, one of my favourite stories actually is uh, when Duncan played for, for England and they were playing Wales at uh, Ninian Park and Jimmy Murphy, who was the Manchester United assistant manager, was also the Wales manager at that time and before the game he was giving a team talk to the Welsh team and he went through all of uh, the English players' strengths and weaknesses and when he had finished, one of the players put their hands up and said, boss, uh, what about Duncan Edwards? And Jimmy Murphy smiled and said, you just keep out of his way, son. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Brilliant. James, thank you very much for coming in. I just a reminder that the book, The Greatest, uh, is, is out now, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, not just for Manchester United fans, but for everybody, really. Um, I've read half of it. I got to the pictures and then I fell asleep. So I'll read the rest of it later on. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a late night last night. <laughs> now on the